Hi everyone, coming on to do another card tutorial and this time I am using the stamp set Humming Along. It is in the new occasions catalogue. New. It's in the current occasions because it's not new anymore. Um, the flower is beautiful but I am not using the flower today, I'm just using the Hummingbird. Um, I haven't coloured it yet so we'll be doing that together. Um, and I'm using the thank you because that's what I use more than anything else is thank you cards. But you have got wishing you an amazing birthday. Hope you feel better real soon. So it is a nice all round set. You could use it all year round. Now I do have a rough sketch of what I wanted to achieve. So if I bring that up, you can see that's hummingbird. Basic grey, whisper white, blush and bride, that's the card colours I'm using. The thank you sentiment. And this is kind of what I had envisaged. Um, I am not doing a square card today. I have decided to do A6. But that's where we're going. Okay. So, I have got my basic grey base. Let me just get my bone folder. Oops. Don't need that. So basic grey card base. You need to excuse my right hand, it's not playing very well today. We have got a whisper white layer which measures la 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 can't remember. I don't know if it's a fourteen point three. Yeah, it is 14.3 by 10 centimetres. These are just my card layers that I always use. I got the inspiration for this from Kylie Bertucci, who is an amazing Australian demonstrator. Um, she does have a down downloadable um, bundle for you to get these style of layers. She has slightly different measurements from me. Um, her layers are sometimes a little bit narrower but these are my basic layers. I like to see a little bit of colour underneath and things. So they are slightly different but the inspiration for it came from Kylie um, and it's just handy if I'm doing a video I can just measure and see well that's that size rather than me having to pull out a um, ruler every time. So that is 14.3 by 10 centimetres. I have then got Blush and Bride cardstock and I used the die from the matching set which is Hummingbird. I think that's the same name. Humming Along Hummingbird. Um, and that is the die and it just cuts out, it's probably easier to show you the template that I cut it out from and that's what happens. So you could either use it like that and layer it on so you can see the colour underneath or you can use the, the die cut and I'm using the die cut today. So let me put that away. And in this you get five dyes. You get the hummingbird, the flower, the leaf. You also get the trellisy thing. And you get a sentiment banner. So let's get back to what we were doing. So I have die cut two hummingbirds because... I was doing two of them. I like to have a sample plus a sphere so that I can give it out. So let's get this coloured. Oops. Push that over a bit too far. So I'm going to keep it quite neutral. So let me see. I've got some pinks and I think we'll go with yellow. And maybe some smoky sweet, which I think is in this one. Yeah. So, let me just grab a few 
pink so so let me go with the light flutter flamingo I haven't got the petal pink yet I don't think I think that's on my still to get list let me just no I have got petal pink I don't know where it is so I need to look and what's this one Light real red, I don't want that. So, oops, I want the smoky sleep. Oh, that's crumb cake. So that doesn't work. Light petal pink. Dark petal pink. Light clips of coral, dark clips of coral, and then we want smoky sleep. Must be in this one. No, it's not. Have I got a smoky sleep yet? I'm sure I did have that. I do. Green's in there. That's a dark basic black. Can't see it for blooming looking at it. Light smoky slate, that smoky slate. Right. Polar Barover. So let's go so i'm going to use the dark smoky slate for his beak and i'll use the bullet end i'm going to use the light petal pink basically all over just so that i have got something to blend into so I'm not being overly careful with this, I'm just going to scalp it on. And I stamped it with Memento, um, Tuxedo Black which is meant to work fine with your blends. I have found that if you go over it too much, it does bleed a little bit, but we just need to work with it. So, hey ho -y. Right, so that's one base done. Then I want the dark petal pink. Again, I'm using the bullet tip this time. And I'm just going to start adding a little bit of extra colour in here and there. You can see that black is starting to move a little bit, which I don't really like, but there's nothing you can do about it really. So now I've got the light flitter flamingo, and this is going to be quite a bit darker, so I am going in with the brush tip, and I'm just going to add a little bit more colour in. Yep. Then we'll go with the dark fluffy flamingo. And I'm just going to add a little bit on his wings. 
and I'll do the same with the tail. Feel free to fast forward this part because I know it can be quite boring watching me colour but I hope that it helps a little bit just seeing how I plan to do it. So now we've got the light clips of coral again I'll use the brush tip and I'm just going in here and again you'll see that there is a colour difference but they're all pretty close so they do um, work well together. Let me just, I'm going to add a little bit onto this part of the body. Then we'll get into the tail again. And you can see that the memento has bled a little. But it's fine, it doesn't bother me too much. Now let me think. I think I'm going to use the dark Calypso Coral just for this part of the body. Just, yeah. And what I'll do is actually bring the light Calypso Coral and bring it down. So that it's not too dark. There we go. And that's blended in beautifully to come down. And that's that part done. Okay, so we can move them out the way. I think that's quite pretty. So I'm going to add a little bit of Winkle Stella. Just because we can. So I'm just going to prime it a little. There we go. Plenty coming out now. And I'm just adding it to the winged area. Like so. And I can bring that up and show you. So you can see the sparkle that it's got. Beautiful. Right, let's get cracking now. So I'm going to take one of my wee Perspex bits. I am going to grab some Tombow. Shift that out the way. Stay and behave. I've got a pile of videos, eh, videos, stamps beside me because I have got quite a few to fill them today. So I'm just adding a little bit onto my Perspex plate and the reason I do this is because it's easy to peel off. I do have a silicone mat somewhere, I just don't actually know where right now. So, put it on my yucky sponge. Turn that over, grab some scrap, and then I'm just pounding it onto the back of my die cut, and that means that it will stick no problem to my base that I want it to stick to. There we are. I need one little bit more and it's all gunky. I need to really change that wee sponge actually. Right, so I'm just placing that there. Move that aside. Pull that way. And then we are going to start building our card. So I want that up here. Let me just try straightening this up a little bit, that's better. There we go. That one's a bit 
crooked. That's better. And that's down perfectly. Next up, I have got my sentiment here, which just the thank you. Oops, that's got a bit of yuck on it. I'll add a diamond or something over that, I think. Or a link it, actually, that might be nice. Right, so I am going to pop this up on dimensionals. Um, I need to put it in your pack, I think. Right ones. them down well and then we can get the backs off them right and I want to position that let me just see okay I want that about there I just want it with the beak slightly coming off the card. Right. And then I need to get my daubers out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I want a blushing bride. Mm -mm. These cases I got off eBay. Um, I think they were about nine pounds, and you get forty dollars on them. Um, blushing bride. Now this is the one that I made a baby on. I bought new stamp pads for all my colours, but for some reason I ordered extra regals and didn't order any settles. So I'm still on my old ink pad. It still works so. So I'm just going to ink measure this. And this will just tie the die cut into it as well. And it'll also help disguise that little boogery bit at the top that I can't get off. And I don't know what it is. And while I'm there, I am going to ink the card as well. Just because I can. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just adds a bit of colour. Actually need to ink that ink pad. It's getting a bit on the dry side. Trying to take the ink through the edges, I seem to be having more ink there. And you'll see at the corner, I'm just kind of rubbing it round. And that's just so that it blends a little bit better. Right, 
There we go. Perfect. Cover that up. I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals as well. Yeah. Don't want a bit of don't want to be better than under that actually. Mm. I actually might use some Calypso Coral, the sheer one. I think that might work. Let me just see. Right, a wee pinky. Yep, I've got to use a wee bit of that. So I need my scissors. Okay. Please, funny papers, please. Thank you. And I'll take off just a little bit because I'm only just putting a strip under it it's just enough to tuck under there um, and this ribbon holder I got from Fernley um, and I find it a huge help because it keeps my ribbons together the only thing I don't like is when they unwrap but hey ho I will look at that later. So let's get this down. So I want to line that up first, see where I'm going with it. Right, so I am going to use some glue dots. I will grab my um, pick tool and I want one there and one, let me just see, so it's just about here. Get that down like that. Turn it over and I will add some tear tape just to hold it in position. Yeah, I know I had tear tape out. I know I did. What I've done with it? No idea. Oh, I do with myself. Unbelievable. So we'll grab another one. And just place that down. Add a little bit there. Turn that. Place that down and that's going to hold that tight. Then I'm just going to add some more, just stick it down with that all together. It saves any hassle. Oops, all fingers and thumbs today. Back to the top. And a bit for the bottom, and we're done. Just a case of putting it all together. So I find when I've got a sketch to work from, it's much easier for me. I seem to be able to 
pull my cards together much better and yes you can still change them up um, you can still decide mm, don't want a square card I want an A6 or don't want an A6 I want a square you can make that decision as you go along absolutely fine it just gives you some structure to what you're actually planning to make and I find that helps me Right, there we go, they're all off. Right, so next up, make sure that my card's open the right way. Don't know where that came from. And I am just placing it down gently, firstly. And then I can shift things over without pressing them down. That looks fine. We have got my thank you. It's going to go there. But, uh, that's fine. So that's going up on dimensionals as well. One, two, three, and four. Let's tuck that under. Around about there. Perfect. And then we want some bling. Let's see. Oh, that's jumping off everywhere. So, oh, I think I might use them actually. Anyway, I think I might use the sequins because they look quite pretty. So we will use these. Um. Three. And we'll add two of these ones because we can. One and two. And I think that's as done. Use that as a B tray for all these dimensional boogers. Like that. And that's for card complete. I think that's quite pretty. You've got your little bits of bling, you have got your wink of Stella on your hummingbird, you've got your ink around the edge. So I think it is quite pretty. And that is using word basic. Oops, missed my middle part. I always tend to do that. So let me grab a piece of white cardstock. I'll grab one from up here. Get that trimmed down. Because we can't be writing on a grey. So for my inside it is 14.3 just yep 14.3 by 10. That's always your insert for an A6 by 10. Oops, where's it? Then we will just add some Tombow because it's sitting handy. Yikes. And 
just slide that into position like so. And then we need to add a little bit of stamping inside. So what I'm going to do is I think I will use the big flower. Once I learn to get it out of this stupid case. Oh, I have started with my new stamp sets when I get them, the cling ones is actually sticking it in my skin a few times before I put it in the box and that takes some of the stick away because right now they are super sticky and you have got to fight to get them out the box otherwise stick it your skin just a couple of times and it makes it much easier and it's still sticky right so stamp up then I want memento that I'm going to stamp off so I will put on a bit of white card soak so I can die cut that and use it for a different card so I'm not wasting the ink so there's one And then I want, in fact, is that still too dark? Let me see. Because I don't want it dark at all. I want it really light. And that should give me just enough for it to give it like a shadow effect on it. Yeah, perfect. It's a little gibber down there and I don't mind. But it just means that the card's not blank and it's easy enough to write over that it's not dark enough to hinder any inside writing so i hope you've enjoyed that that is using the humming along and hummingbird framelits i hope you have a wee go thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and i'll speak to you soon bye for now